Hello everyone and welcome back. Absolutely beautiful spring morning here. 31 degrees. Inch of snow fell overnight. Light misty freezing rain right now. Three to six inches of snow coming later on today with 60 mile an hour winds. Two more months and the days start getting shorter. It's about 2.30 in the afternoon right now and you can hear it's just nasty. It has been going like this most of the day. This freezing rain coming down, starting to hang on the trees. seven o'clock at night I just went out and filled up the boiler I did a full to almost 24 hours and uh, then I changed the differential if you remember I don't know if it was the last video I changed it to five but now that we're gonna be colder for a few days I changed it back to eight you get a much cleaner burn when it takes at eight degrees to you know get up to temperature more burn time I should really filled that thing up to you can see it burning the steam and everything off because that wood has been getting rained and snowed on today. Good morning everybody. I have about 140 mile, a little more than that round trip today and it snowed all night. Kind of that snow rain mix where I'm going up to they got 6 to 12 inches so I think once we get out on the pavement, it will be a lot better than what it is here. The last snowstorm we had, they never even plowed the road. <laughs> this one. Let's see if they do it today. It looks like we got a good four to five inches though. Looks like we got a school bus that went right into the ditch up here. This is going to be a long commute until it gets a little bit warmer today. My truck got it pulled out. <laughs> Just slid right off the edge. I don't. They must have fishtailed sideways and went in. Well, at least the pavement looks a little better, but there's icy patches. It'll be interesting when we get up 50 miles north how those roads are looking. It's supposed to get to 38 today though. And right now I left the house at 7 o'clock in the morning. So hopefully it'll warm up fast and clear them up. you guys have been watching the fish house videos that's what I mean you'll just see them sitting in people's yards like a camper going over the st. Louis River right now it's really high Just going nice and slow. I'm mean, doing 40, 49 miles an hour right now. Two wheel drive, but yeah, you don't like these roads. It's that slushy ice. Somebody's having a bad day.
Well, I haven't uh, haven't filmed much at all for the last two days. Um, Melissa's in there making, uh, what is it called? Pork chops and onion gravy. It's been going for about seven hours now. It smells so good in that house. I filled this up last night about nine o'clock and right now it's about 7.30. Still got wood in there to burn for several hours. I took the plow off the four-wheeler today and I ran the loop where I did the snowmobile before. A couple places that it was real hard to get through. I mean, the first time I went through twice, second time it was pretty easy, but... Uh, and there's a lot of water back there now in the low spots, but there were some of those bags that were full to the top, so I dumped everything. We're only going to have three or four more days here where it's going to run. I wasn't sure in those bags with all that rain and stuff we had, you know, it'll run down the tree and then hit the spigot and then drip into the bag. So I dumped everything, and now that I could get back there, ah, we'll see. Like I said, three, four days here, and then it's going to be above freezing night and day, so they're not going to do much. Looked at the trees. They're getting the buds on them, but not real heavy yet. So the stuff that was dripping out still looked clear, so I'll see if I can't get something out of it the next few days. We'll run through there and take a look and See if I can get some boiled up so that we can uh, do the couple little experiments with maple syrup that we want to do. I think with this wood that's cut right here, I, I mean, there's still, the way it's burning right now, there's a week worth of wood here, at least. And then with this stuff over here that still has to get cut up, I'm not sure we'll really have to break into that other pile at all. That's going to run us up close to the end of the season. Today's high only got to 38 degrees, but that's like 15 degrees below normal. And I mean, so pretty soon we're gonna have 60s all the time and there's gonna be no reason to really run the boiler. But I'd like to get this cut up anyway, get this cleaned up. We got these logs and then I've got the ones that he laid underneath. Hopefully tomorrow, I think it's supposed to get a couple more degrees warmer and the following day. This whole week is supposed to like, you know, not be real cold, so hopefully the snow will mainly melt. And like I said, I haven't been filming much the last couple days. You know, I've got a lot of subscribers and appreciate every one of them. And we had one guy named Mark, and you guys, if you have followed the channel for any amount of time and go through the comments, you would see that Mark would comment. And anyway, he had my personal phone number and Melissa's personal number and her um, Facebook and everything and we would all message and I mean he messaged with my kids everything just kind of became a family friend and in fact when we had that party a couple years ago he drove he lived in Vermont and he drove all the way from Vermont here and got a hotel in town and spent two or three nights here and helped with the whole party he's the one that put together the gas grill he put up all the solar lights that are around the garden and just helped a lot. He made, he cooked up um, pork loin for that party and with just a lot of help. And he's just been a friend. He sent us so much stuff. When he came that time, he brought me his dad's 30-odd-six bolt action. His dad passed away years ago. 
and gave that to me for deer hunting. And when my dad had his brain surgery, he um, sent, I don't know if it was his dad's or his grandpa's, I think his dad's, I've got it written down in my safe, a double, an old double barrel shotgun that my dad now has. Anyway, you know, he, last time I taught, he messaged me, he asked me about possibly buying the work camper because we're gonna sell that this spring. And, and then he messaged Melissa about it and stuff. And anyway, then, you know, she would hear from him almost daily. And then it had been like a week and a half or two weeks since he had messaged. So when we were having lunch the other day, she, she said, have you heard from Mark? I says, no, I haven't heard from Mark, but there have been times when I wouldn't talk to him for a couple weeks. And, you know, and I jokingly said, well, you know, I wonder if he's still alive. And then we just kept eating and she's checking the phone and sure enough, there is his uh, obituary. He died of a heart attack and it just was kind of set us back, you know, I mean, um, yeah, it just shocked us. And he took such good care of his mother who was in her 90s. And uh, I guess he went over, what, what we heard anyway, is that he, wasn't feeling very good so he went over to her place and spent the night and uh, she found him dead in the morning when you read the obituary it says he died at whatever hospital it was but I suppose they transfer you there and then I don't know what happened regardless of what happened um, he passed away and that's yeah it's really sad so he used to send us so much stuff cheese I've still got cheese that he sent me in fact last time him and I talked he asked me if I needed any cheese, and there's one kind of cheese from Vermont that he would send that had this um, real nutty flavor. You can't get it here. And he was going to send some to me. And then I hadn't heard anything, but I you know, didn't really think about it. And um, a lot of the stuff that's in the fish house now, like the utensils for cooking and everything, he had sent previous times, or he brought a bunch of that stuff when he came for the party, and I just put it in a box and put it in the basement because I didn't need it. And sure enough, and uh, I remember I texted him and told him, I said, you have basically uh, all the stuff in the fish house for cooking and everything came from you. So anyway, it just kind of set me back and didn't really feel like filming for, for the last couple of days. So I've just done little things. You know, life moves on, but you still have to stop and remember those people. Now, like I said, tomorrow, hopefully we can run around and we'll check the maple trees. I think the weather is going to be nice again. And hopefully not real windy. Today was the first day that it really hasn't been that windy. I don't have to put my hand in front of the microphone trying to block it. I have to bring the garbage cans down yet tonight, but I'm waiting because the snow is still melting. And since I didn't plow, I think it's almost wide enough. I tried doing when I drove with my truck to kind of go off the track a little bit so it would get wider so the garbage can tires can go down without me plowing snow. But I'm going to keep this video going for a few more days because I really haven't filmed much. And we can watch some more of this snow melt. Tonight is supposed to be this huge chance that we would be able to see the northern lights. And I've seen them many times, but I haven't seen them for quite a while. And Melissa has never seen them in her life. And this will be the third or fourth time this winter. And every time uh, well, I haven't seen them, Brandon saw them one night. I think I mentioned that in another video, but they say it's going to be cloudy all night, but I can see a little peak of sun there, so there's still hope. Anywhere between 10 and midnight is the prime time, and I don't know that, that this is going to break up. It looks pretty cloudy. Well, I haven't filmed anything for two days. 
Uh, yesterday, I didn't even get home from work until almost 7.30 at night. And I'm just coming out here now and these bags, they're not over or running over, but they, some of them are full. Some of them don't have anything in it. And that one back there anyway. So I'll have to find a trailer and uh, grab some buckets and we'll get these dumped out tonight. I don't think we have maybe one or two more nights of these running, so it's just a few days season. And it's just amazing how this weather has changed so fast and now we have rain coming in tonight. And then some warmer temperatures. Snow is melting nice. I was looking around trying to see if I haven't never found any here, but I keep looking for morel mushrooms. Well, let's go check the other bags and see what else we've got. Maybe a third of a bag on that one. there only has about five more inches till it goes over the top that's a full bag Maybe a third of a bag on the left and three quarters of a bag on the right. Maybe half a bag on that one. We thought for sure this tree snapped off and it looks like it just bent over. Wonder if I can put that back up and tie it and it'll still grow up straight. As soon as the ground dries up a bit so you can drive a truck back here. I'll haul this up by the house and get her cleaned up and put it for sale. I got the trailer hooked up. A little bit later we'll go back there and we'll dump what we've got. It's, I don't even want to do any boiling if I don't get 15 or 20 gallons. It's not worth it. But if I can get that much, that's all I really need for what I want for this year. I did go get my truck washed today. It was getting pretty dirty.
Oh, I'm definitely going to have my 15 or 20 gallons. Uh, I have enough. There. I think it was one of those bags that was only half full. I can probably finish that. Then I got to go try to find another bucket. I just bought these three because they're brand new. And the reason I couldn't uh, come out and fill them right away is because I had them in the back seat of Melissa's truck. I had to wait for her to get home from work. Looks like the woodpecker's been using this tree this winter to get stuff to eat. Just looking around to see if there's any mushrooms. There's just nothing growing here yet. I mean, this snow just melted. Let's see if you guys can see it. There's a rough grouse. Two of them. You can hear them drumming all the time now, especially in the morning and the evening. So I have that one there. I think they hold about three or three and a half gallons. It does a pretty good job on that five gallon pail. I would say with those two that will pretty much fill up a five gallon pail there so that's like two and three quarter pails. So yeah, I have probably, I don't know, that bag is awful. About that much. I don't know, at least another two, maybe two and a half, I don't know. I think I'm just going to leave you here and I'll run out and do that and come on back. You've already been down that trail two times in this video, so I'll be right back. We'll see what happens here. Maple season is about done, but that usually marks the beginning of the birch season. And I have a lot of birch trees out there. You know, with maple, you get 40 to one roughly ratio, uh, if everything's perfect. And with birch, it's closer to 100 to one. But I wouldn't mind, it's been a long time since I made birch syrup. Totally different way of kind of doing it and uh, a different taste. But I might do that. It all depends. Opening fishing is in two weeks. Got a lot of stuff coming up here, but if I have time, I think we're going to do that. I'll probably fill up the boiler in about an hour. I didn't do it at all this morning. And I think that's supposed to start raining in about an hour also. Right now it's about 7.40 at night. Well, it's 9.30 at night. I just went out and filled up the boiler. 
I was going to take you with me, but then I popped out here and it was raining earlier and it's still coming down. Good morning everybody. This morning I, I got the stove out here and then I brought the pans in and washed them and scraped them and sandpapered them. <laughs> Trying to get them as clean as I can. I think today will be the last day that we'll, you know, collect any sap. It did only got down to 50 degrees last night. Uh, they've got about a quarter inch of rain overnight. We got more rain coming this afternoon and, and evening. And uh, those trees are going to bud out really fast. But I wanted to get this fired up, start boiling the stuff that we have there. Well, it's getting close to two o'clock in the afternoon. I've, so far, I just opened up my third five gallon bucket and poured about half of it into this side. So we've, I don't know, we're going down, we're doing pretty good. It's boiling pretty nice. Like I said, I just put it in there, so, and then I just loaded it back up with wood again. I think I'm gonna run out, I'm boiling that sap. I think I'm gonna go out and cut a little bit of wood. It's not this weekend. Today's Thursday, not this weekend. Oh yeah, not the next weekend, but in the, the following day, the next weekend is Granddaughter Rose's um, dance recital that we have to go to, but the following weekend is opening fishing. I'm gonna be done burning the boiler, I think, by then. I'm guessing another week, yeah, to two weeks. So basically I'll be running it from just before deer hunting, which is the beginning of, so the end of October, to the middle of May is the burning season with it. But I wanna, you know, there's still wood to be cut up there and I know that I think by tomorrow, it doesn't burn very much right now, but by tomorrow night or the following night, I would be out of wood and it's supposed to be raining out. So maybe I'll, I don't have anything else going on right now. Might as well cut some while that's boiling and 
even if it's only for 15, 20 minutes, it'll be enough for quite a few days. Well, that's plenty of wood for now. I definitely hit the dirt when I was going through that big one and it dulled that chain up. I'm not gonna cut any more for right now. We gotta go over and check that sap. I just filled up the stove here. I was cooking a spiral ham in there today and I, it was in there longer than it had to be so I had to go in there and get it all cut up. I had a spiral ham and cut up potatoes in the same roaster and a few sausages cut up that were in the fridge that needed to be used. So I just got that all cut up and packaged and put it in the fridge so we can eat that the next few days. Come out here and load it up the stove. House is smelling awesome in here right now. 
Well, it has started lightly raining out now. And we're only supposed to get like a tenth of an inch an hour for like two hours. And then it's going to let up some before it rains more overnight. I'm going to run right now. I want to go and get what sap we collected today, pull all of those taps. And I'm going to run back to the uh, workshop right now. If I can find the right bit, we might tap a couple of birch trees and just hang a bag on there just to see if they're running yet or not. Yep, that's the end of 20 gallons right there, and I just put a bunch of wood in there, So, and one of them was a big piece. One thing with the fire like this, if you put a big piece in there, like, like that slab wood, it'll go kind of flat in there. Well, until that starts burning really good, that heat isn't going right up against there, so then your boil will stop. Using the smaller wood will give you an intense fire a lot faster, but I had that in there, so I needed to burn it up. Oh, let's see, which one are the bits in? When I'm doing this syrup like this, uh, Mark, the, the guy that just passed away, last year was it, or the year before, he sent me a bunch of the, uh, their uh, glass bottle that you put the syrup in, but it looks like a big maple leaf. So when I was downstairs, I had to go down there and find my hydrometer and the little stainless steel thing it goes into and I was looking around for stuff and I saw that box of stuff up there. He also sent uh, maple candy molds, plastic ones. I'm not going to be doing candy this year, but I had that in boxes down there. I had forgot about the molds. I I do remember the jars because I didn't use them much. I did think I did one or two jars because they're expensive and they seem uh, pretty special to me. So the one that we use that's in the refrigerator is one of those. I think I used a 5 sixteenths last time. This is a 3 eighths. much at all running today. I can't remember how much we're in these two. I don't think there was much in that one. That one just has a couple inches in the bottom of it. Just wanted to show you guys this. Look how that one's running. This one's a little slower, but it's still running pretty good.
no birch in this area. It's all maple trees and poplar. A lot of birch back there. I can't remember how many we have up where we're going. I don't see the rough grouse here today. I could sure hear them drumming this morning. Maybe we'll run into them yet. We have a bunch of smaller birch down there. I'm sure there are some bigger ones too, but I'm not going that direction because I still got to get these trees and stuff cleaned up off the trails. Well, that ends the maple sap season here in Minnesota for me. Looks like we got about 10 more gallons, just a little bit under 10 gallons this time. You can see on the left side there, which is our boil pan, the other one is our warm-up pan, how it's starting to get that syrupy color because we just keep adding to it so the sugar content is getting higher and higher. Birch trees are an awesome, like if you were stranded in the wilderness and you didn't have any clean water and couldn't start a fire to boil water, they are a great filter for water. You can drink that, oh, same with maple, but the birch, that really runs. Let's see, I got a lot of them to choose from. There's two real nice ones over there. Two real nice ones right there. We already did those too. There's a whole bunch of them there too, but there's a lot of water to try to walk around. I have a total of nine bags that I set. I was gonna do 10, but I can't find one of the, the little spigot thingies. I don't know if I left it in one of the trees or what, but we'll see what we get. along with using the smaller wood if you can, 
it's nice to build your fire closer to the front of the stove because then it drags the heat across your boiling pans because I mean it's all going to the stack so if you build it up front here you get a lot more use of the heat before it goes out through the smokestack. Well, it's just a few minutes before eight. I just loaded up the stove with some more wood. I'm trying to burn it real hard. So far now I've got 25 gallons that have been put in the pans. I have one more pail left, but I don't know if I'm just gonna boil this down and wait because once that rain starts, it's gonna rain quite a bit overnight and well into tomorrow so I'm not going to have time to continue this batch. This batch needs to get into a stainless steel container and be brought into the house ready for the final you know dropping it down the last degrees that it needs to um, or actually raising the temperature up to make syrup. I see he took his little thingy out. It's little one. What's that? His little what? The little thing with the palm. Ah. Oh. see his back window with the lights on and the shed. And he took that out. And I did hear talking. Is that him? Yeah. He must have some buddies over. Huh? All kind of people running up and down the room with these things right now. I changed the differential back to five. So should kick on right away. A beautiful night. Still a little bit chilly. Most of the lights here, it wasn't a sunny day, but most of the lights on the garden that Mark put up are shining. The other ones will shine once the sun comes out a little more. Over there, the neighbors have their back pole building open. He took out his, he, has, he bought one of those side-by-sides. Can hear him out talking to somebody. I don't know if it's his wife or some. Anyway, <laughs> you don't realize in Minnesota here, it's been six months since we heard any of that. I have to get the eggs. I haven't got them for three days. There's going to be quite a few of them. Went in there and gave him water this morning and said I need to bring one of the egg baskets to pick them up. I'm here to get the eggs. Looks like you guys have laid a lot of them. 16 eggs. I wonder if, I can't remember who it was that sent me these baskets, two of them. wonder if they still watch the channel. We use these all the time. I'm not going to add any more to the back, the actual boil pan. This one I'm going to add some more to just so it doesn't burn. You can't take it off and you can't let it go dry because it'll burn it. And then right before bed, which isn't that far away, I'll take all this off and put it into a stainless steel pot and we'll deal with it tomorrow. Well, it's about 10 minutes after 10. I usually go to bed about 10.30. I'm going to run out there and pull that sap that we boiled down and put it into a pot and bring it inside and tomorrow we'll finish it off.
we'll finish it off in here tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. I have the sap boiling down slowly on the kitchen stove. And I'm running up to the store right now to get some cinnamon sticks. Climb back from the store and got some cinnamon sticks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make maple syrup. Some of it will just be, depending on how much I get here. We didn't boil that much sap, but I want to have at least one half pint that has a cinnamon stick in it and one that has a, ah, what are those things called? One of these things that Melissa gets of vanilla bean. And then I'll just leave that in there for six months and see if it infuses in there. This has been boiling constantly with my little instant read thermometer at 210 and now it jumped to 212. 212, when it gets up to 219, I will test it with the hydrometer. And this here is the hydrometer cup or whatever it's called. And then I'll take this thing out of here and I put it in there and it floats and then there's two lines on there and you want to be up I think we want to be by the top one if I remember right I'll, I'll know once I get it out of here there I have my cone 3 filter inside of my Orlon filter and that's what I'll dump everything into to go down into that bucket before it gets bottled boiling at 214 degrees now it's just a couple minutes later and now it hit 216 and you can see I don't know if you can see it but it tries to make those little bubbles and then as it goes down it'll start to bubble up you got to watch it close right now though and like I said I will check it when it hits 219 but every time I've made syrup I've had to boil to 221. You can see right there, that's the red line I'm shooting for. So I can take a little bit more moisture out. I'm only going to let it boil. It's hard to take a reading right now because there's so many bubbles in the pan. So I'm probably going to just let it boil. Like this is fine for me. It's within, there's like two or three degrees that you can be off with this or whatever it's called. I don't know if it's a degree. But I'm going to just leave it in for a couple more minutes and then we're going to just run it through the filter. I'm hoping to get three or four half pints out of this. I don't know how much it'll be. Two is all I really need, but I would like to get three or four. Well, I got eight half pints, and there's a little bit left in the pan, and I just tasted it, and it's really good. Typical, looks like late season dark. These two right here, I put a cinnamon stick in each one, and these two right here, I put a vanilla bean in each one, and the back four are just regular. I'll just let those sit like that until they cool down. Okay everyone, well thanks a lot for watching. Looks like the birch are dripping quite well. At least most of them are. Today is a much cooler day than it was yesterday. But some of these are doing pretty good. Stay tuned. I guess we're going to be doing birch syrup next.
I will see you guys on the next video.